first of all, thank you so much for joining me. Like, no you know, I love your videos. I love your vlog. You make family life look enticing. I'm not going to lie. Because <laughs> don't lie. I'm like, this might be something interesting. This might be something I can do. Um, I, I feel like you, um, you balance everything with so much grace and I really respect what you do. I respect your content. I love, you know, the way you speak about life issues and speak about your family. So I was like, no, I have to have this conversation with you because I'm like, no, <laughs> and I need to hear your insight. I wanted to hear your take on um, what you define as purpose. It's very easy. Um, I, I think that Purpose is the reason why anything is created. Mm -hmm. When anything is manufactured by the manufacturer, they have a reason behind their mind why they were putting this thing together, whether it be a pencil, an eraser, um, whatever it is, an ice cream flavor, they have a purpose in their heart, and that's why they create it. So something exists because of its purpose. Mm. You don't, um, you don't, um, what, what's the word? You don't exist and then you now get a purpose. No, the reason why you are even existing is because there is a purpose already. So purpose is very easy. It's why a thing was created, living or not living. So, I mean, for humans, I guess we would say that purpose is why our manufacturer mm -hmm. made us. And I think that's really important for everybody to find out what theirs is. Mm. You know the funny you you just brought up something that like is so uh, was so obvious and true, but it didn't occur to me like you have your purpose the moment you're created. But for some reason, I just have always had this notion. I think that's generally how we see purpose as like it's something you get with time. But I I think it's um, based on you know what you the way you've defined it. It's like something you come to realize, but you've always had it right. Always had it. That's the, that's the key. Like, you've always had it. It's not even when you were created. It's before. Because before you were even created, he, yeah, he knew why, you know, you needed to be created. So it's before. Um, and what happens is that a lot of us don't even put thoughts to it. Some of us end up working in purpose, but we don't even realize it. We don't, I mean, but it's just better if you put thought to it mm -hmm. and you discover it early and you you know, develop it early and then you walk in it early. Mm. Funny how you ask that question. My husband and I are so big on purpose. Like, <laughs> it, it, I feel like it, a lot of times when you realize it, it, it shapes the way you move through. Yes, it does put everything in perspective. Everything. The good, the bad, the worst, the end, like, nothing. Nothing is surprising. Everything is just in perspective, no matter how outrageous it seems. Okay, so we've kind of established that it's a realization. So when do you feel like you got that realization of your purpose? And For me? Like stepping into it and like living it. Okay, when I found out what it was, okay. I, I wasn't anything close to living it. I found out my, what my purpose was. <laughs> after I broke up with my seven year boyfriend, we're in a relationship for seven years and I broke it off because we grew apart. He became um, very controlling, very insecure. Mm -hmm. And I just knew that this is not what I wanted. It was very painful. I cried. I didn't have another option. So it wasn't because somebody else came. And so it was very painful. And I went into a 30 day fast and I just told God, see, it's me and you. Yeah. I'm not living like, see, man. <laughs> and then I was like, you know what? You have to tell me what's up. Is you or you? <laughs> That's <laughs> what I, I hear you. I know I had like an encounter that um, he gave me a purpose and I was learning so much about purpose and I discovered that it's not, it doesn't, it has to be something that's really clear and I told him specifically, I want one line, a one liner. Give me my one line purpose, you know, and I got it. It was clear, but I didn't. It wasn't any. I, I wasn't even doing. I was in school. I was a. I was in college. I was. I was in California. I was living my life. I was being a big girl. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't anything like what you know. But then I just knew. So everything I did, I had it in mind. Everything that came my way, I had it in mind. Um, at that time, I was changing my major from architecture to corporate comm. So 
like, I just kind of was like, okay, well then it's time, it's time, it's time, it's, it's time, it's time. So I guess um, when I realized that I've started living in it was still in college, which was surprising to me. But then it was like towards the end, like my last year in college, my senior year, uh, um, it just, it dawned on me after like I'd spoken to a few people and I realized that, oh my God, this is the thing. Like I'm actually doing it now because I always thought that it had to be like big scale. It had to be like, you know, like how we see on TV and all of that. But then the little things. And then another thing was that when I met PJ, who's my husband, when I met him, um, I, I wanted a sign because he was nothing like, <laughs> he was nothing like, my sister was like, how did you even talk to him? If it was me, I would have blocked him. He was nothing like anything I should be talking to. But then there was just one thing. I told God, I said I needed a sign and God told me to ask him what his purpose was. And he told me his purpose and I'm not even kidding you. Same exact line as mine the same egg i'm not even kidding you the same exact line i can tell you if you want but that's i mean that's but that was another uh, major landmark in my life where my purpose became useful because i was like hey ah uh, okay you're a keeper <laughs> so yeah would you be comfortable sharing that with us of course i mean yeah i mean um so what my purpose is um is one line is to help other people find their purpose and to put them in the direction towards achieving it. It sounds really broad, but it's not so, you know, broad. It's just, and, and, and this, this is a big responsibility because people's purposes can be different. And I think why mine was really, like, why mine led to that was because I told you it took 30 days. Mm -hmm. The whole process of discovering who I am and why I'm here, it was a lot for me and I learned so much in that time that it made sense that God would say this is why I put you here so that you can help other people find out what their purpose is and then put them in the direction that's the part that's very broad putting them in the direction because for some people they need school fees for some people they need to get in a vocational school for some people they need to they need accommodations for some people they need to learn a skill so that puts the burden on us to now find different expressions for this purpose you know and so it's been exciting interesting and i'm just excited about the future because i know that um, god was the one that gave it to us so he's going to figure out a way that everything will make sense and happen but that, that's it that's that's it okay so it's so interesting that you um actually told us your purpose because i think a lot of times we also think purpose is like solely in the realm of our career um and i know you know with our generation you know we're like career driven career focused and not that the older generations weren't but i feel like a lot of times we can get caught up in um it's only in the sphere of our work like what we do for a living you know what? That was one of the parts where I was conflicted because when I said purpose, I mean, I want to be used by God. I want to minister in songs. I want to minister the word, you know, but that doesn't cut across a real life. Um, what job do you want to do? That doesn't cut across, like, how do you want to be? Like, so what, um, what I ended up coming up with, I told God legit, I was like, see, you know what? Whatever you are going to give me as my purpose, I need to be able to say it in a conference room with my professor, my mom, my pastor. Like, I, I should be comfortable enough to express what my purpose is in front of all these people who represent different parts of my life. Mm -hmm. Where they all say, yeah, that's doable. Where they even it doesn't even matter what they say, but where like it all makes it makes sense. It has to make sense. So it's not about one thing, it's about you as a whole. Yeah, so that was one of the major like are you able to say what your purpose is in front of your pastor? Are you able to say it in front of I mean whoever, your professor? Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, so I want to talk about our culture a little bit. You know, we have um we're very straight laced in terms of Nigerian culture. You know how we can be. And um, I always feel like, or, or I've always noticed how a lot of um, things in our culture kind of influence my decisions. So, you know, that understanding of, okay, I realize this is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is my purpose. 
how do I how do I not explain that to my eighty year old grandmother? Like telling her, oh well, I want to live in Nigeria, and she's like, hello, why? Or telling this person that, do you know what I mean? And and I think like for example, like let me give you the example. I, I was having the conversation when I was here with my grandmother. She's like, yeah, you're not going back, right? I'm like, I am. And she's like, why? And she goes on this whole spiel and she's like, do you want people to say that you're a spin, you know, you're a spinster, you live by yourself. I'm like, you know, then the whole cultural norms start coming in. And, you know, if I was much younger, maybe like four or five years ago, that thought would have been like, oh, she right. Maybe I should just stay here. You know what I mean? So, um, do you feel like our culture and the way that we see things and, and the norm to us can in any way affect how people um, live out their purpose, step out into their purpose, or even the decisions surrounding their purpose? Absolutely. I agree with you. It is it's not, not that can it, it is a major, um, let me say, influence to whether or not we live out our purpose. Mm. But then, although it's a major influence, mm -hmm. it is not a factor. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, God is not going to ask if you are, if you, uh, um, if you were a Nigerian and if that was the reason why you did not do this. Or if you were, I don't know, Spanish and that's the reason why you did not do this. Or do you understand? So, it's a it's an influence, it's a big influence, but it's not a factor because at the end of the day, your purpose may not necessarily have anything to do. It, it can even be totally against your beliefs, your ideologies, and your family belief system, and your and everything. But then it should still be like I feel like it should still be guided because there are a lot of young people who have zeal, who have zest, but they're chasing the wrong thing. And that's the saddest thing because you can be very passionate, you can be very passionate and you can do exploits, but in the wrong thing. Somebody like Hitler, Hitler thought he was fulfilling his God divine purpose, but there's a way my husband defines purpose. Purpose is always noble. So you can't tell me that Hitler was fulfilling his purpose. No, he was a great person. He was, but the, just the fact that it wasn't in a positive and noble way he wasn't mm -hmm. he doesn't create anybody to 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 come and yeah the one that we choose is by yourself that oh okay oh, the one god gave me i don't like it so now i want to now be judas mm -hmm. but he doesn't create somebody and say oh today i've given back to the person that's going to betray jesus it doesn't work that way so i think that we at the end of the day it's up to us it's up to us and then like you said a few years ago you would have agreed that it was true it comes also with growth and maturity. And of course, maturity is not by age. There's some point in your life where you get to and you'll be like, no, 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 I have to make this decision for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it just might seem like everybody else doesn't get it. Mm -hmm. But eventually, you will not start hearing things like, I knew that this girl had something in her. You now start hearing things like, we said it now. We said, even when you were, you'll be testifying how, when you were, do you understand? But then, if you act based on what they're saying and God forbid they're like you're not fulfilled in life or you kind of things don't work out right, they won't be there. They won't be there. And everybody wants to be there. This is your back but I don't want to say to you, but everybody wants to be associated with um, success. Um, success has many fathers, but failure is, is, is an orphan. Mm. Nobody will even come to your side. But then no matter even if you went to wherever, Pakistan, and then you now Something good now happens and you get a Nobel Peace Prize. Oh, oh, that's our daughter. So at the end of the day, like it just it's up to you. At the end of the day, it's up to you. Hmm. Okay. So, um, what encouragement do you have for someone who they know what they're supposed to be doing, right? But um, they're not stepping out because they're afraid or because of circumstances or experiences. What What advice would you give to them? Let me just say, um, it's just one line, but then I can explain it. Fear is a lie. And the devil is the father of all lies. And what he does with fear, he tries to steal your joy. He tries to steal your, your 
It's your God-ordained, your God-given purpose. And what he does is he brings fear. Afraid of what? Hmm. What exactly? And you need to be able to, like, you need to, be able to get your mind to the point where you think of, like, the worst-case scenario and just survival mode. When I was supposed to get married to my husband, in fact, when he proposed to me, he was on missions in one village in River State. Um, and I know there was no electricity there and all that. God was dealing with me. At this point, I was in Pennsylvania. I was working in New York. I was living life. And God told me, like, it just dawned on me, like, because, I mean, I was flowing with the relationship and everything because I was thinking, last, last, this guy will come to the U.S. and meet me here. But then God now spoke to me and said, if you have to go to this village that there's no lights, and at that time, it's a couple of years ago. At that time, my husband's salary was 11000 wow. If you had to go, and that was like what I was making in the U.S. per hour. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you had to go, will you go? Mm. It wasn't something easy for me to answer. I don't even think I gave an answer like in a month. But I had to bring myself to that fact, like what could be the worst case scenario? Mm. And I had to come to the point of if I die, I die. Mm. If I die, I die. I'll rather die trying to fulfill purpose than live a life of misery where I, um, you know, I mean, maybe the wrong relationship, maybe because I chose a guy who's, you know, wealthier than my husband at the time and he's beating me up and crying inside a AC. Mm-mm. I'd rather eat my ever and no stew in the village and and do you understand if you have to come to that point the thing with this generation is that we don't tell ourselves the truth mm. and we want to deceive ourselves there's something i used to say it's okay if somebody is deceiving you it's okay but when you are in trouble is when you know that you are not able to tell yourself the truth you have to be able to tell yourself it, it's not nice but you have to be able to tell yourself the truth like ah this way you are going you know, is mm. destruction mm-hmm. so i feel like at the end of the day it's fear but you have to come to the point where you get to and you say, if I die, I die. Yeah. And that's when we really begin to live. Yeah. When we die. <sighs> you're just preaching to me because, I mean, everybody that's going to watch is going to get preached to, but you're definitely preaching to me because I know personally, like in, in my life right now, which is why I wanted us to have this conversation, um, that whole thing of being stuck in how things, like how my life was or my past and like moving past that to move ahead. It's been so challenging, painfully challenging. Right. Um, but it's like, you don't have a choice. I mean, you kind of do have a choice. You can be in the past and like not do what you're supposed to do and potentially ruin your life. Or you can step into what you're supposed to do. And take a look at you and you have an assurance once in a while you need that confirmation. Like, am I really, is this really it? Am I really doing it? Once in a while. And as long as you have that relationship, your communication with God is still solid. You will keep giving you assurances. But then you literally have to forget the past. Do you think I don't miss McDonald's? Do you think I don't miss something? The flatbread sandwich with the banana sandwich too. Do you think I don't miss it? Do you know what I do? I pass the whole America. And I left America. Is there? Mm. I have to go back. I will pick it up. <laughs> like I have to leave everything. Like so, I don't even. My mind doesn't even go there. If I see, if I see anything like that reminds me of it, I can just be like, oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, it's true. We used to eat Subway. Oh, ah, Subway is nice. So, um, Yoshinoa is nice. So, just uh, Panda Express. Ah, mm. oh, we used to do this. But I never like look back and say, oh. Subway. No, no, no. I never like because I just left it all. I left it all. You cannot, you cannot, you can, it's not one leg in, one leg out. It's not possible to go forward when there's still one leg at the back. So let it go. Let it go. The thing is that when you do, those things are going to come back. Those things are going to come back. Like the next time, I, I mean, so I was hustling, I was struggling as a young girl, making hair, doing all the things, volunteering in church, you know, everybody knew me as Ladedi, 
like they the hard worker like they, i'm always there i'm volunteering everywhere like anybody wants to plan anything i'm there dollar tree they know me like i know how to like i can like diy and um, that, that's one of the things i miss actually i'm there like i can i can throw you a party with 20 dollars like i like we will set it don't worry you know and people just knew me as that girl and then i come taking this bold step first of all that was like oh she could do that i had people that told me that I have people that don't talk to me right now because I moved to Nigeria. I have people that said, oh, you are leaving the promised land. They are leaving the promised land. You are going back to Egypt. Mm. They said that uh, Nigeria is Egypt. When the children of Israel left Egypt and they were going to the promised land. And I'm in the promised land. I'm going back to Egypt because of herbs. I'll be what were they eating then? <laughs> You know, I've heard all sorts. And I've heard people say, don't call us for money, oh. We're not going to answer you. Oh. You know, just all sorts. And then now, those people are commenting on my videos, on my YouTube videos, checking me out on Instagram. They may not comment, but I see their views. I see their story views. And these are people that have written me up. Some of these people have babysat for them. They saw me as, like, I, I literally did house help. And I'm not even ashamed to say it. I did anything to get what I wanted, not anything in a bad way. I, yeah. I was a very clean girl, you know. But babysitting, I was there. Making hair, I was there. Tutoring, I did tutoring, home lesson, I was there. So I've had people look down on me and like, because I was like a house girl. And now I'm here taking both steps. Like, the, 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 what for me is the reward for all of this? When I see some people that I've, I've met in the past one year, six months, and I see how their life was when I met them. And I see how their life is right now. If that's the only reason, it's enough. Mm. It's enough. Because I just look and I'm like, what? Only God can do this. Because some of these guys, hey, some of them even intern with me. They're learning, you know, how to shoot, how to edit, lighting and all of that. It was hard. These are people that they, they've not, they dropped out of secondary school. They don't even know how to speak English very well. And then now, we're having conversations that you know we're even like on the same wavelength kind of thing. so that is for me that is the reward once in a while you will see those things that will be like ah even if it's only this one person but funny enough it's not one it's a yeah. lot of people. so yeah i feel like if i, if I die now I, I i'm okay if i've been seeing so much death around that i'm just now like okay god i'll do my best every day and if i die at least i'm happy that i took this step of faith i did the thing you called me to do. I feel like I've talked to much. Mm. Snaps to that. Snaps to that. I, you know, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough for, for joining me to have this conversation because I think it's, it's really relevant. You know, people are at a place where they didn't see 2020 going like this and they're also like, um, how am I supposed to function? How am I supposed to thrive? And I think one way is just like you mentioned, holding on to that, that knowing what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and knowing that regardless of the condition, you can thrive and you can do more than thrive. You can carry it out. So I thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to, to join us and, and talk to us.